Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel with Horizon Hobby, and we're here today at the world-famous William Bennett RC Flying Field in Las Vegas, Nevada, at sunset, which is intentional. We're hoping that helps you guys see these incredible navigation lights uh, in the uh, sunsetting sky here today. Um, but I'm here with an awesome model. This is the E-Flight FW190A 1.5 meter, or what I like to call our finest Falk Wolf yet. Uh, that said, it's actually the first Falk Wolf we've ever had in the E-Flight lineup, which is really exciting. You know, for many, many years, we've had all kinds of, of models, a, a lot of P-51s, of course, T-28s, Spitfires, Corsairs, uh, but we've ever, never actually had in the E-Flight brand uh, an FW-190, and this is absolutely fantastic, guys. We took everything that we learned from the E-Flight P-51D Mustang 1.5 meter, we stepped it up a notch. We took the scale detail to another, another level, we took a lot of little details to another level. Be sure you check out our overview video, which will be linked down below. Uh, you can see a whole lot more details about this model, even compared to the P-51 in that video that we shot earlier today. Uh, but I'm excited to show you guys this airplane fly. It looks so good, it's so enjoyable to fly. There's a lot of really, really cool features Features. I'll go into some of them real quick. Uh, so we do have extra scale details, tons of surface detail uh, all over the aircraft. Uh, we also have functional scale features, of course retractable landing gear. We've got operational split flaps. Uh, we do have the navigation lights as you guys will hopefully see in the video when it's flying in the sky. We've got them on the wingtips but also on the rudder this time. Really nice uh, little touch there. We've got a simulated engine cooling fan. But even though it's simulated, it actually functions to help cool the power system. This is basically the same power system that's in the Mustang 1.5 meter. So we do have the uh, same motor, the Spectrum Avion 100 amp Smart ESC. And then because this is a bind and fly basic version, we do have it equipped with an AR637TA receiver, which we'll get to here in a moment. Uh, it is set up for 6S batteries, all the way from a 3200 up to a 7000. I've flown all those batteries. 3200, you gotta have it all the way up. Maybe depending on the weight of yours, you might have to add some weight. 4,000, you gotta have all the way up. 5,000, I hang it a little bit off the forward part of the uh, removable battery tray. 7,000, I kind of put a little bit further back. Flies great with all those batteries, guys. Flight times, upwards of five to seven minutes with a 5,000 and kind of typical flying style. I've even gotten 10 minutes, no problem, kind of doing some, some nice warbird-like flying and some nice slow and smooth scale flying. Uh, it's just a, a great flying airplane all around. It is six channels out of the box. Again, we do have that 637 TA receiver in the bind and fly basic version. We have the plug and play version available without the receiver as well. But what I like about the uh, 637 TA is it comes pre-programmed with AS3X, which of course are three axis gyros and an optional use safe select. Now I've got my trusty, very favorite new radio, the NX8 here fantastic radio. You do need a minimum of a seven channel transmitter if you want to fly this airplane with all the primary controls plus the retracts plus the split flaps and having safe select on a separate channel. The NX6 is very unique in that it has a kind of six and a half almost seventh channel which works perfectly for actuating safe select on and off. So an older DX6 or a DX6E not enough channels you need a minimum of a seven channel or more transmitter in order to have safe select on a separate switch, which of course are the bank angle limits, the pitch angle limits, the self-leveling. I don't need those to fly myself, and a lot of guys are gonna argue they don't need it either. That's fine, it's optional use. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I always bind with it active. It helps me in case I ever fly through the sun, lose orientation, or just something happens unexpectedly. I can flip that on and it helps me out. So really, really cool feature. You guys will see we've got the very long scale-like retractable landing gear with shock absorbing struts, uh, we do have relatively large scale size wheels on here. They are very hard tires. I do go into that in the overview video, why we have those tires on there. They are ball bearing supported. They've got treads. They look awesome. The gear mounts are beefed up. Uh, there's a whole lot of really good things going on. We've added a bunch of extra plastic reinforcements around the hatch area where the uh, landing gear mounts, even all the way through the top of the wing, where the three piece wing joints uh, go together. And one of my favorite little details, which you guys may or may not be able to see in the video, we even have these, uh, and I apologize if I butcher this uh, for our German friends, Nicht on Fassen. Uh, these markers here that are red plastic, they're not foam coming off of here, uh, which basically means do not touch, by the way, guys. But uh, now I'm touching it, of course, uh, and I shouldn't be. Uh, but those are just really nice little details that we put all throughout this model. It, you, you know, I, I, in a way, I kind of feel bad saying this, but this is even better than the P-51 Mustang. We learned so much from that model. Phenomenal flying airplane, uh, phenomenal airplane all around. This is a, just another step better. You know, we're constantly improving. We're constantly learning things as we go. We're very excited with the way this turned out because it flies a lot like the P-51. It is not hard to handle at all. It is not a first warbird. 
please watch the overview video. I explain why that is. Ground handling is a concern. You've got very long legs. Yeah, they're very wide spaced. The tail wheel's pretty far back. That helps on just taxiing around, but it does create some different obstacles on takeoff and landing, which we're gonna talk about. Our hope is today I can show you a takeoff and landing on pavement, and then we'll move over quick to the grass and hopefully show that as well. I'm flying with the 6S5000 30C Spectrum Smart LiPo battery installed. I do have my telemetry screen. I'm gonna come over to the cameraman to show you guys. I've got one of my favorite screens up. This is my ESC status. You can see I've got the RPM there. I also have the uh, motor current. You've got the FET temperature and the BEC temperature. You can also scroll over and if you use a smart battery, you have individual cell voltages. How awesome is that? You also have the, the, uh, uh, the temperature of the battery. It's <laughs> unbelievable when you use a smart battery. You do still get overall pack voltage. You don't get battery uh, temperature when you use a regular battery, but you can have a low voltage alert set up for that. You guys will also see we've got some other screens here for there we go. Back to AS3X gains. All this now is displayed right here on your compatible airware equipped transmitter like the new NX series. Absolutely phenomenal. Love having that data. Uh, and I love talking about this airplane, but you know, this is a flight talk video. We're running out of daylight. So let's get it into the air. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about uh, a bit is some of the hints and tips that I've learned flying this really quick. The manual, the first print of manuals, don't include some of the information we really like you to have. Uh, they do, you do need a flap to elevator mix. Uh, that is somewhat dependent on your preference. When the flaps go down, you do need some down elevator mixed in. Uh, I personally ended up with 10% uh, uh, for my takeoff flap position using the settings in the manual and then also 20% for my landing. It's a little different than what's in the manual. Some of that is personal preference. We do also rec recommend reversing the gear channel uh, just so it's more industry standard. So when you pull the switch back, it's gear up. When you push it forward, it's geared down. That's not mentioned in the first run of the manual. Always when you get one of our planes, guys, go to our website, go to the instruction manual, look at that electronic copy if you can, because usually that's the most up-to-date copy uh, possible. But we will go ahead and get that updated very shortly. But let's get to it. So I did mention we've got flaps. They are split flaps, just like the full-scale airplane. And oh, something I really like to do, and, and I should have probably done this a, a minute ago, but I like to bump my throttle up to at least 25% just to make sure my AS3X is on and active, especially if I'm flying in windy conditions. That way on takeoff, you know, as I'm rolling into the throttle, I already have AS3X working. Also something that I personally like to do, you guys will hear me beeping away. I'm just bringing up the throttle trim so the prop is just kind of windmilling. I really like the way that the airplane looks with the prop kind of spinning there at low RPM. So every time I throttle back, the prop doesn't stop completely. I do have the high rates as recommended in the manual. I am going to use those for takeoff and landing. You don't want to use the high rate elevator at full throttle and pull a loop. It will snap. The ailerons are a bit hot at high rates, uh, but when you're on landing and takeoff, it's good to have that extra elevator and that extra uh, rudder control to help keep things on track. So I'm gonna taxi out on the runway here. We basically have almost no wind right now, which is a good and bad. Actually, a little bit of wind doesn't hurt, especially if it's down the runway when you've got a tail dragger warbird like this. But I'm gonna kind of talk you guys through this real quick. I'm holding full up elevator right now and a little bit of rudder. And I've got my takeoff flaps down. As I slowly apply the throttle, I'll slowly let off the elevator and the rudder to try and get a nice smooth takeoff. I am not gonna punch it to full throttle and I'm also not going to go all the way to full throttle for takeoff. You can hear me rolling on the throttle, keeping it straight, keeping it straight, keeping it straight, letting the tail up, flying off at about two thirds, gear up, throttle to full, flaps away, you guys hopefully can see these navigation lights. It is so awesome in this sun setting sky. I'm gonna come by here on a real quick fast pass. Look at that. Wow, love the way that looks. So awesome. Sounds cool, you guys probably can't hear that because I'm mic'd up and, and that's the sound you're mostly hearing. It is a very quiet airplane though, guys. Really quiet, really smooth. Again, very similar uh, power system and performance to the P51 1.5 meter. Come by at another low pass here, make it look pretty. Look at that, just a beautiful airplane. Good looking airplane, really good handling. So guys, I'm gonna just pull into a really tight circuit right now, show you off that different color bottom side. Oh, love the way that looks and sounds. And guys, I can't describe it enough. It's so, so locked in, unbelievable. All right, so come by here. Get a little bit of a point roll coming out of this turn. 
pull up. Just love the way it looks doing aerobatic maneuvers. Pull up over the top, throttle back a little bit and roll out on the down line. Do the reverse of that over here. Pull up, roll, throttle back and pull around nice and easy. Bring it back by here. We're gonna do a nice big loop. Hopefully my cameraman is ready for this because we're going big and high. Great power, better than scale power, guys. It's more power than it needs. I know some guys are always looking for more power, more speed. We clocked it earlier at about uh, a little over 80 in level flight and then came uh, and did a dive and got it to about 90. So it's got pretty good speed, more than enough for most people, I think. All right, I'm gonna roll it over here, bring it on an inverted pass. Now, depending on the battery you're using, depending on where you have that position in your center of gravity is gonna dictate just how much down elevator you need. I'm not using a ton of pressure here. Bring it by fast and low inverted. Ah, oh, just love the way that looks. Push, roll, and pull. I do wanna keep the flying portion a little short so I can show you guys those, those landings and then the takeoff and landing in the grass as well. I'm gonna put the flaps down now, keep the gear up, and I'm just gonna fly it around slow. One of the things that impressed me the most about the P-51 was just how slow you could fly it comfortably. This airplane is much like that in almost every way. It's unbelievable how slow you can fly it. I know some other guys earlier when I was flying it were gasping. They're like, oh, that is so slow. How is it not falling out of the sky? I'll keep it up so you guys can hopefully see it in the sky there, the sunset sky, but look at that. Keep the nose up a little bit. I got full flaps. Look at how slow that is. Guys, this is a 1.5 meter, almost 60 inch span, very similar in size and weight to uh, the 60 size Hangar 9 Warbirds we used to fly a lot back in the day. They could not fly this slow. Granted, they weighed a couple pounds more and had nowhere near the detail, uh, but man, it's look at that. I can turn it around real slow, which by the way, I am using rudder it's very, very important that I'm not just using aileron here. I'm bringing the rudder into the mix to keep the nose, bring it around, make it look good, keep the wing flying. Love that, look at that. All right, I'm gonna come around here, I'm gonna punch it, put the flaps away, I'm gonna climb out so you guys can see the power. Fantastic, good performance, and I love being able to see that light. I really hope that comes through on the video, guys. All right, so. I'm gonna come back by here, throttle back a little bit with the flaps up. I'm gonna put the gear down. Looks so cool coming down, look at that. And then I'm gonna put my flaps down. Do a little extra pass here for our gear check, flap check. And then I'm gonna bring it in for a landing. Something very different about this model, which we'll talk about a little bit in the overview, is how to land it. We, raw, we highly recommend the stock wheels on paved surfaces. And when you're landing, especially with no wind, it's a little unusual to some people, but we highly recommend a three-point landing. All right, so I'm gonna bring it in. <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge, takes some getting used to. Definitely takes some practice. A little bit of headwind doesn't hurt, but let's roll over here real quick to the grass. Let's do a quick takeoff and landing in the grass just to show you guys that it can do that as well. I will admit, grass is a little easier to take off and land in with this particular model. So we're gonna bring our cameraman over here as the sun is going down, temperatures are cooling off. I gotta say, this thing, it, it handles this break between the uh, pavement and the grass really well. No problem. Go back to my takeoff flaps. All right, so it is a little easier to manage out of the grass here. Show you guys that real quick. We've got high rates again, so I can keep some elevator pressure to keep it from nosing over. Slowly roll into the throttle, you don't punch it, I've got my takeoff flaps. I'm just gonna do a really quick circuit and then I will land it to show you the difference on grass. 
So bringing my throttle up slowly, getting it rolling before I add the throttle to fly off. Just do a real quick, simple circuit while I put my landing flaps down. And then I'll show you guys, I'll back up, I have my camera and back up here a little bit. So we got a little more room to work with to avoid these obstacles here. And I'm gonna show you guys a wheel landing on the grass real quick. Keep backing up for me. Keep backing up for me. All right, we're gonna do a quick wheelie landing in the grass here. Again, we got full flaps. Flying it down to the mains. Didn't quite do just a wheelie landing. I'm gonna do a touch and go on that rowing real quick. And I wanna show you guys a little bit closer to the camera, the, the wheel landing. I have my camera, I moved to the left a little bit. Got some obstacles here in the grass that I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> the nice thing about having a paved runway is you don't usually have to use your grass, but we're trying to take advantage of it a bit today. All right, got full flaps on, letting it come down. I'm gonna kiss those manes and let her roll out. There it is, all right. So there you guys have it, the E-Flight FW190A 1.5 meter. Uh, finest Swak Wolf yet, it is an absolute blast to fly. Looks amazing up close, guys, the fit and finish, the way it flies, the way it handles the technology that it has. There's a whole lot of information. Be sure to check out our website for more details. And also be sure to check out the other videos we have here on YouTube. We'll link some of those uh, in the end cards and also in the description below. Thank you.